Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. I would say the most loathsome and vile politician of the last half century, and there have been many, the award goes to Hillary Clinton. She's the worst of the worst. She always goes to the bottom of the barrel. She sinks, she sinks even below, below. And there she is again on CNN. The Democrat Party is obsessed with Adolf Hitler, but it's too bad. They're talking about 1939 where the neo-Nazis met at Madison Square Garden. Last time I checked, the Knicks played there and so forth, but that's all right. But they're not upset about 2024, where the neo-Nazis populate the Democrat Party and populate the organizations that support the Democrat Party and populate some of the supporters and voters of Kamala Harris. You know, the River to the Sea crowd, the neo-Nazis, you know, Talib, Omar, and their ilk, I haven't heard Hillary Clinton announce them. I haven't heard anybody in their party denounce them, including, of course, Kamala Harris. Or what about CARE, the Hamas front group, the neo-Nazis? They support her, and so do so many of the other Jew haters. So Hillary Clinton can talk about 1939. I want to talk about 2024. But before I do, let's talk history and the Democrat Party and Hitler and the Nazis and the Jews. And while we're at it, Let's throw in a little bit of their racism against blacks. So we'll start with Hillary. Go. And you know, one other thing that you'll see next week, Caitlin, is Trump actually uh, reenacting uh, the Madison Square Garden rally in 1939. I write about this in my book. Uh, President Franklin Roosevelt was appalled that neo-Nazis, fascists in America, were lining up to essentially pledge their support for the kind of government that they were seeing in Germany. So I don't think we can ignore it. Now, it may be a leap for some people, and a lot of others may think, I don't want to go there. I don't want to say that. But please, open your eyes to the danger that this man poses to our country, uh, because I think it is clear and present for anybody paying attention. Well, nobody pays attention to you. I think you sold 2,200 books. Well, let me talk about my book, which sold a hell of a lot more than yours, The Democrat Party Hates America. And I do want to delve into this because it's time before this election that people know that the Democrat Party has been a poison in this country from its very founding. Despite the best efforts of its party apparatchiks, academic surrogates, and media propagandists to ignore, spin, or obscure the horrendous story of the Democrat Party's past, from the Ku Klux Klan and lynchings to segregation, Jim Crow laws, voter intimidation, etc., the Democrat Party had a hand in all of it. In fact, Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, was a Democrat, as were virtually all of the leaders and generals of the Confederacy. Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, a Democrat, became the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan after the Civil War, which he helped found to terrorize the newly freed black slaves and destroy Reconstruction, which Republican President Ulysses S. Grant sought to destroy by deploying the U.S. Army. Grant's efforts were stymied if the Democrat Party won a majority in the House of Representatives and cut off the military. A few decades later, among the leading so-called progressive intellectuals, American Marxists, the late 1800s and early 1900s was Woodrow Wilson, a prominent Democrat who was president of Princeton University, would become the governor of New Jersey. Wilson was an accomplished racist activist. In his academic work on American history, Wilson was friendly to the Ku Klux Klan's mission of suppressing blacks, and he was forgiving of its terror tactics, he explains Williamson M. Evers in Education Weekly. When he was the president of Princeton, Wilson expressed his pride that no African-American students had been admitted during his tenure. As governor in 1911, Wilson signed into law a eugenics bill titled An Act to Authorize and Provide for the Sterilization of Feeble-Minded, Including Idiots, Imbeciles and Morons, Epileptics, Rapists, Certain Criminal and Other Defectives, which was later struck down by the New Jersey Supreme Court because he included blacks among them. The eugenics movement and the so-called scientific application of eugenics as creating a superior governing system was promoted by the so-called progressives. Isn't Hillary a progressive? Oh, I think she is. And the Democrat Party, and led to the idea of creating a superior race of people by culling the population. 
One of the most avid and influential advocates of eugenics was Margaret Sanger. She's the founder of Planned Parenthood, which has had deep ties to the Democrat Party for a century and has been funded with billions of federal taxpayer dollars for decades. Indeed, any present-day attempts to reduce the group's tax subsidies is met with howls of objections from congressional Democrats and, of course, Kamala Harris. Who was Margaret Sanger? She's been celebrated as an early feminist and birth control pioneer, but she was much more than that. Sanger was an ardent racist. She spoke to the Women's Auxiliary of the Klan in New Jersey. She supported the forcible sterilization of unfit women, black women. And Sanger made many documented racist declarations throughout her life. For example, she wrote, eugenics is the most adequate and thorough avenue to the solution of racial, political, and social problems. Again, the target blacks. She argued that birth control is not contraceptive indiscriminately, and thoughtlessly practice, it means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual expiration of defective stocks, blacks. Those human weeds, she said, with threatening the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Nonetheless, Planned Parenthood praised Sanger for decades, conferring its highest award, the Margaret Sanger Award, on a long list of recipients, including Hillary Clinton. Yes, and it wasn't until 2000 that they distanced themselves from Sanger. wonder what Hillary's done with her award. Maybe she put it in the Clinton uh, Library. Woodrow Wilson, like many progressives in the era and intellectuals, he believed blacks to be an inferior race. He opposed black suffrage and supported various insidious efforts in predeterminately southern states to limit their influence at the ballot box and in politics and society overall for essentially the same reason they supported racial eugenics. That is, they believed it was impossible for government to more expertly and perfectly manage society given the influences of a supposedly inferior race. Thus, they believed they were justified and even compelled to use social and economic regulation to minimize black influence. Consequently, as president, Wilson overturned decades of racial progress made under prior Republican administration. He set back race relations for half a century. For example, Wilson brought Jim Crow to the federal government, helped introduce it to areas of the North, spread it throughout the country by resegregating federal departments and agencies, including hiring practices, work areas, even segregating restrooms and lunchrooms. Beginning in 1914, Wilson required applicants for federal civil service jobs to provide photographs for the first time to block the hiring of blacks. Wilson appointed racists and segregationists to his cabinet and throughout the highest levels of the federal government. And not only screened the racist movie, The Birth of a Nation, at the White House, the movie was adopted from the book, The Klansman, but racist diatribes from his book, The History of the American People, were prominently featured in title cards in the movie. Now, I want to go on. This Democrat party has had a pass for too damn long because most of the media belongs to this party. This party, racism, segregation, Jim Crow, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism today, and for Hillary Clinton to get in there and talk about 1939, the neo-Nazis, it's her party today that's filled with Jew-hating neo-Nazis. It's Donald Trump and the Republican Party and the MAGA movement that defends the state of Israel, that is appalled, appalled by the Democrat voters in the streets chasing Jews at universities and elsewhere. And I want to explain this to you. Kamala Harris publicly agrees with protesters accusing Israel of genocide. What he's talking about, it's real. This is a damnable Jewish libel by the candidate of the Democrat Party. Another, meet Kamala's incredible team of anti-Semitic Islamists. And there's a hell of a lot of them. Meet Kamala's Palestinian best friend who changed her mind on Israel. Another bigot. Kamala Harris is surrounded with these people. Neo-Nazis. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.